Take a listen and see if you can tell the thing that connects all of these songs. Creeping down the back street on D's. A new day brings a new problem to a brother. And all I got to say is thank God for my mother. Cause with nobody's smiling. Nobody's smiling. Educated man from the motherland. You see, they call me a star, but that's not what I am. Did you get it? We just took a tour of hip hop all over the US with songs by Dr. Dre in LA, Scarface in Houston, New York with Eric B and Rakim and the Jungle Brothers. And the connecting thing between these songs is the drum sample. The drums on each of these are sampled from the intro of Kiss In My Love by Bill Withers from 1972. Today, we're diving all the way into this drum sample, how it came to be, the drummer behind it, dissecting individual elements of the drum kit, and seeing how this drum groove is a dream sample because it's essentially lightning in a bottle. Ooh, actually, the phrase lightning in a bottle is a great metaphor for this drum groove. It's usually used to mean doing something seemingly impossible, but for this story, it fits perfectly because that's exactly what this drum groove is. James Gadsden is a legendary drummer who's worked with uh, just about everybody. Marvin Gaye, Aretha Franklin, Quincy Jones, Smokey Robinson, B.B. King, newer artists like Nora Jones or Justin Timberlake. Oh, D'Angelo's song, Sugar Daddy. That's James Gadsden hamboning on it. Sorry, I know that sounds weird. That's the actual term for this ham boning, just basically just playing drums on your own body. As weird of a name as it is, ham boning is actually going to play a crucial part in this story. But for now, let's jump straight to the groove. The main reason this groove feels so amazing is because it's played by an incredible human drummer and it's not played to a click. By click, I mean a metronome. This is how modern music is recorded. The drummer lays down the drums to a metronome and every drum hit ideally falls somewhere on that perfect grid. But the Kiss and My Love groove isn't that at all. The time wanders just a bit. Not so much that it bothers you, but just enough to have room to breathe. But it's not just the overall time that has flexibility. It's the subdivisions in between, where each of those hits land. The hi-hat is slightly swung, which provides much of the feel, but the kick and the snare don't always line up exactly with it. Take a listen to this kick drum. Did you hear it? That second kick drum, kick, snare, kick. Second one is slightly late. I'm gonna put that in quotes, late, because sure, it's technically late, but it feels amazing. I've explained my analogy for this before, but imagine modern music being made on a grid, like graph paper. If you're recording to that, every hit is gonna line up perfectly with one of these subdivisions. But if you're not playing the click and you have incredible feel like Gadsden does, it's like he's playing to his own hand-drawn grid. There are imperfections and points don't always line up perfectly, but overall it feels amazing. So not only is this groove amazing, but Kissin' My Love starts with an extended drum intro. This is perfect for sampling, it's an incredible groove, it's just drums, and it plays for a long time. In other words, for hip hop producers looking for drum samples, it's lightning in a bottle. But that's not quite the full story. First though, I'm giving away some incredible records like original pressings of this album, The Jungle Brothers and Eric B and Rakim. I'll be hosting a live stream this Sunday, November 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Whatnot, where I'll be co-hosting a live show and giving away free records. Whatnot has sponsored this video and partnered with me for this giveaway. It's an app where you can shop new and used vinyl records. There's an awesome community of passionate vinyl collectors and you can interact with people live. To join the stream and enter the giveaway, all you gotta do is click the invite link in the description and sign up for a free WhatNot account. And you'll get $15 off your first purchase. Then go follow Noble Records and dig into greats on WhatNot and bookmark both of our shows scheduled for November 19th. We'll be going live from the Noble Records account, giving away original pressings of Still Bill, Straight Out the Jungle, and Let the Rhythm Hit Him, and auctioning off awesome records at great prices. If you want to sell something from your own collection, and click the seller referral link in the description to get fast-tracked through the process. That's gonna be a ton of fun, but now let's get back to this drum groove. There's another aspect to why this drum groove feels so good. This has to do with James Gadsden himself, his upbringing in music, and what happens when you let a world-class drummer do his thing. James Gadsden was born and raised in Kansas City, started in doo-wop, started playing jazz, and then started working with a musician named Charles Wright. 
They eventually formed Charles Wright and the Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band, which, yes, that's a mouthful, but it took him a while to adjust to the group. As he states, I had become a jazz drummer. I was playing a lot of outside stuff in Kansas City. We could get away with certain things. I couldn't play the R&B stuff because I couldn't play in the pocket. I didn't know nothing about none of this, so Charles fired me about five times. But after getting the hang of it, he was laying down grooves like this one. Isolate those drums. This is a B-side to a larger single, but Gadsden wrote this and it's him singing on it. If that groove sounds familiar, it's similar to the biggest hit by the Watts 103rd Street rhythm band, Express Yourself. Now, these grooves are great. They feel amazing, but they aren't the lightning in a bottle that I'm talking about. Speaking of, do you remember Ben Franklin's kite experiment? The way I heard it in school is that he just decided to fly a kite in a thunderstorm. There was a key at the end of the string or whatever. It shocked him, I guess, and then he discovered electricity. Well, recently I learned that's not the full story. The kite string was connected to a thing called a Leyden jar, which is a special jar that has electrical components in it that can store an electrical charge. So, in other words, Ben Franklin was trying to capture light in a bottle. Anyway, just some crazy history for you. I'm sure that won't tie back into the larger metaphor later. So it's the late 1960s and James Gadsden is playing in the Charles Wright Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band. That's such a long name. Can we shorten that? Charles Wright's band. I mean, there's more people in it. Charles Wright 103rd Band Street. No. Oh. CWW 103 SRB? Let's just say the Watts Rhythm Band. While Gadsden is playing in this band, a bunch of the players get a call to do a session for Dyke and the Blazers, which, yes, now sounds like a joke band, but it was in fact a very real group that released songs like this. That groove! <laughs> This groove is so good. This song was a minor hit for the band, and most of the band members on this are actually from the Watts Rhythm Band, but as Gadsden remembers, they had a bit more freedom. We had a great time because we got to experiment. It was altogether different from the Watts Band stuff. We had a controlled situation with the Watts Band. We couldn't really use our ideas. Hmm, sounds like James Gadsden has some good ideas, and if you let him do his thing, experiment, get a little weird, you might have a hit on your hands. Noted. Well, just a few years later, in 1971, the Watts Band was in trouble. There were disagreements on the business end as well as the creative end. One thing led to another, and most of the rhythm section left and immediately started working with a newer artist, Bill Withers. So this album, Still Bill, Bill Withers' second album, features a rhythm section from the Watts Rhythm Band, Ray Jackson on keys, Benorse Blackman on guitar, Melvin Dunlap on bass, and James Gadsden on drums. Because they've been playing together a while, they sound amazing. You add Bobby Hall on percussion and Bill Withers on top of it all, and this is an incredible album. But when it came to Kissin' My Love, this was the last song they recorded. The group tried a few different versions of the groove, but it wasn't quite working. As Gadsden recalls, it was supposed to have been a shuffle, but it wasn't working. So I had to come up with something and Ray Jackson and I would be talking. I'd say, what about this? Gadsden taps out a rhythm on his knees. Next thing you know, there it was. I told you the hand boning was a crucial part of this story. Look, I didn't come up with the name, but I am the internet's official hand boning awareness ambassador. In a drumming instructional video from 2008, James Gadsden breaks down a bunch of different funk and R&B grooves, the defining elements of each, and then he gets to this section. That's West Coast style, kind of what they call a Gadsden style, the 16th notes. You can hear the 16th in the hi-hat. A little of the disco, a little of the Latin rhythm, a little of the Mississippi rhythm. So the West Coast with that type of beat, probably a mixture of all the things, you know, East Coast, South, North, there's kind of a mixture. Did you hear the groove that he played? The Gadsden groove? That's basically just a sped up version of Kissin' My Love. The drum groove on this song is the result of, uh, yes, ham boning, but more than that, letting James Gadsden do his thing. 
not putting him in a box like the Watts Rhythm Band did. Allowing him to say, this isn't working, to ham bone something out real quick and combine influences. Kissing My Love is Bill Withers flying a metaphorical kite into the lightning storm that is an unrestrained James Gadsden, receiving the groove and bottling it in the form of this record. This groove feels so good because it's a unique combination of a bunch of different subtleties from various genres. It's not one pure style, it's a perfect synthesis of many. That's why Dr. Dre on the West Coast hears this groove played by a jazz drummer from Kansas City and goes, oh, I want that. That's why Eric B and Rakim in New York hear it and want it, or Scarface in Houston, or the Jungle Brothers, one of the first samples of this groove. This lightning in a bottle has something for everybody. This drum groove has been sampled not just in the songs I mentioned, but nearly 200 other times. Another song that has a memorable drum intro and has been sampled even more is Apache by the Incredible Bongo Band. This is one you wouldn't necessarily expect. I mean, it's drums and bongos and the movie it came out of is one of the most insane things I've ever seen. But I'm out of time, so for that story, you gotta click here. Oh, and I'll see you on Sunday for the record giveaway.